right. So these months that we have been together, we have been on a journey of faith. We've been discovering through our baptism from where it all began, what we are a part of. We are part of a bigger picture. And that picture is the kingdom of God. On the day of your baptism, you were anointed and baptized into something much bigger than yourself. And it was the beginning of something. It wasn't the end of something. It was the start of something new. Amen? Yeah. We, through our baptism, if you remember, we talked about three a threefold office that we received. Does anybody remember what it was? Priest, prophet, and king. Yeah. Good wow. plan. Go to the top of the class. <laughs> priest, prophet, and king. Oh, that's great. We received a priestly office. We received a prophetic office. And we received a kingly office. And all these weeks that we've been together, walking together, we have emphasized a different element of those threefold offices, and we've used the personality of King David. Do you remember? Yeah. Yes, good. That's, at least that's good. Something has entered. Something went <laughs> in. In the priestly office, if you remember, we spoke that David was a man who exemplified prayer and praise. The priest is the one who offers prayer and praise. And as David was a man of prayer and praise, so do we, through our baptism, become people of prayer and praise. And this should be unwavering in our lives. It should keep us rooted in who we are as Christians. Amen? Amen. And then we spoke about the prophetic office. And the prophetic office in David was seen because he was a man of the word of God. He himself was a prophet. But he was also a man who listened to the voices of the prophets in Israel at the time. There was the prophet Samuel, there was the prophet Nathan, and there was Gad, and many, many other prophets. David was a man of the prophetic word. He stood on the word. And we, too, have been invited over these weeks to do the same, to be people who listen to the prophetic word in our lives. And we act on that word. Amen? And then we had the kingly office. And the kingly office, if you remember, we spoke about service. Service and friendship. That we, especially Koinonia, we are called with a special anointing to service of one another and friendship with one another. Just like David, as king, was a man who served his people and had strong relationships, and we know especially through the scriptures that he was particularly friendly with Jonathan. So this idea of the priestly, prophetic, and kingly offices, we have been developing over these months with you. Okay? Now today, we're going to delve into another aspect that is associated with this threefold office in our lives. And I, it's particular for us because we are a community of friends. Koinonia John the Baptist is fundamentally a call to friendship in Jesus. And each one of us is called to be a friend one for the other. We are called to something particular. And this is what I want to talk about today. Celebration. We are called to celebrate. How do we celebrate 
the threefold office of priest, prophet, and king as a, for a group of friends, as a community of friends, Koinonia John the Baptist. How do we manifest this call to celebrate as a community? Let's discover. Celebration accompanies my whole life as a member of Koinonia. All my life should be accompanied with this sense of celebration. Celebration as a member in the body of Christ and celebration as a member of Koinonia. And I'm not talking about revelry and partying, even though now it's important to have a party every now and again. Of course, and we do celebrate and party occasionally. However, it's a deeper sense of celebration because it's something that I am doing not on my own but with others that brings enjoyment, enjoyment, enjoyment in activity. So that means in everything I am to celebrate. David was a man of celebration. How do I know? Well, he wrote a lot of songs. And people who write songs usually have quite a good joy in their lives because there's plenty to write about. He was a man who celebrated. And how are we in ourselves to celebrate? How do we as Koinonia celebrate? I wrote down a list of things, and these are the things that I wrote. Like David, we celebrate the victories of the Lord. Who here can say they have victories in their lives through Jesus? Raise up your hand. Every one of us. That's something to celebrate. We celebrate the relationship with God. Who here has a strong relationship with the Lord? Every one of us. We celebrate the relationship with the Lord. We celebrate our friendships with our brothers and sisters. Who here has friends? Lots of friends. And now you have more friends because you're in Koinonia. We celebrate on the certainty of God's vision for us as a community and in the unity that strengthens us. Tell me that since Koinonia John the Baptist came to Bridgeport, you feel even something stronger to celebrate? And you're now starting to get a vision that you want to celebrate? Yes. We celebrate the Lord's faithfulness to his promises. Who here has seen the Lord fulfill his promises in their life? Look at this. Wow, we've got a lot to celebrate. And then, like David, we celebrate our faith in the living God. Who believes? I believe. I believe in the power of the presence of Jesus in my life. I believe in the power of the presence of Jesus in the body and in the assembly of Koinonia. We have a lot to celebrate. We have a lot to celebrate. So more specifically then, since we have been talking more theologically in these months of priest, prophet, and king, let's delve a little deeper into how do we celebrate the priestly office that we each received at our baptism? And the answer is simple, through prayer and praise. Remember, the priestly office, prayer and praise. David, King David, in the scriptures we're told, praise God in the great assembly. This is what he did. And in 1 Chronicles 29, I want to just read you the first, the first sentence says, King David then said to the whole assembly, who did he say to? The whole assembly. And the whole assembly started to pray. You want to take note of verse, from verse 10 forward. He blessed the Lord in the sight of the whole assembly, and this is what he said. 
Blessed are you, Lord God, our Father, from eternity to eternity. And he went on and on and on. A tremendous prayer that called the people in prayer and praise to celebrate the presence of the Almighty God in their presence. Amen? And you know that when we come together and glorify the Lord, the glory of the Lord comes down. The glory of the Lord falls on us, and the stronger our faith, the weightier the glory. When we were praying today, the weight of the glory of the Lord, you could feel it. Why? Because of our faith, the level of our faith. When our faith is strong, we allow the Lord this capacity to open the heavens, as Michael said for us in the prayer. Open your heavens, Lord. And the Lord opened his heavens, and his glory rested upon us. Because when our praises go up, the glory of the Lord comes down. So we, as one voice, exercising our priestly ministry, must glorify the Lord with that one voice. This is why when Michele invites us and Michael invited us to make the prayer, we are making the prayer with one voice. And it's important that we shout it out. It's important that we hear each other's prayer. In the great assembly, we are celebrating Jesus who is present here with us. It's a celebration of the presence, the indwelling presence of Jesus with us. Wow, that is something to celebrate. Imagine, the glory of the Lord is in our midst, and we are to rejoice in that. We are to rejoice in the glory of the Lord present in us, in us, not just with us, but in us. How beautiful. Wow. So then, through prayer and praise, the community is bestowed this special anointing, this special presence. Through each one of us exercising our priestly office that we received at our baptism, we are allowing the Lord to make himself present in our midst. And the scriptures also tell us that the Lord himself is a man that likes to celebrate or a God who likes to celebrate. We know also from the scriptures that Jesus celebrated, didn't he? He went to the parties with his disciples. Well, he went to a wedding. I don't know how much of a party it was, <laughs> but he went to a wedding, didn't he? And he celebrated. And this is what the Lord has created for us, even in the Old Testament. He created days of celebration, days of celebration, days of feasting. We celebrate this in our community. In our community, here today, a coin on a day, it's a celebration. It's a celebration, not only because you all brought something nice to eat, and it's always really good when you guys cook, but also our time of prayer and praise together was a time of celebration. We've been able to celebrate being together and the Lord created this time for us. And guess what? We can do it every month. Wow, every month we can exercise our priestly office. And then he gives us the agapito, which you're going to be beginning very soon. And that will be another occasion to celebrate. To celebrate through prayer and praise the presence of the Lord. And then he gives us other celebrations such as the house of prayer. Hands up here who has a house of prayer. There we go. A house of prayer. It's a celebration. It's a time to celebrate. It's a time to to praise the Lord. It's a time to exercise your priestly ministry, your priestly uh, office as a baptized Christian and as a member of Koinonia. 
So every occasion then, we should try to make it a time of celebration because it gives us the opportunity to pray and praise the Lord together. Amen? Amen. So if that is our priestly office, what is the prophetic office? How do I celebrate <coughs> my prophetic office as a member of Koinonia John the Baptist? Very simple. I must engage with the Word of God. The Word of God has to be central in my life. I said to you already that David was a prophet. He was a prophet because he was rooted, and I mean rooted, in the Word of God. And the Word of God manifested itself as the truth in the life of David. David believed in what the Lord was saying and he acted on the truth of what the Lord was saying in his word and as a result of that what happened? The Lord in his faithfulness produced exactly what he said he would do. How many times in our lives are we invited by the word of God the prophetic word of God, to do something, standing in faith and believing, and then a period of time passes and the Lord reveals that this is true, that this has really happened. That is a prophetic word. And we as Koinonia, because we're a prophetic community, we have this as a tremendous gift in our community. The prophetic word is spoken. Michele, during the prayer today, had a prophetic word. Letty had a prophetic word. And the Lord speaks through his word. And he speaks through the power of the scriptures. Whenever I can take the word of God and pray, and at the end of the word of God, I can open it and the Lord will say, for thus says the Lord to me. Just like that, he speaks. This is standing on the truth of the prophetic word. Just like David, we are invited to stand on the truth of the word. And the word keeps us secure when life is full of uncertainties. When life is demanding more of us that we cannot give, the word keeps us sure. David in his own life, when he was only a little boy, was anointed king by Samuel. Do you remember? But it was many years, many years before he was made king. And even before he was made king, Saul, who was the king, tried to kill him on numerous occasions because he was jealous. He was jealous. Yet David remained firm and faithful to being a servant to the king and he remained firm and faithful to the word that had been spoken into his life. And he waited and he waited until the moment came when the Lord revealed his faithfulness and he was made king. A prophetic word spoken into his life at a young age allowed him to be able to stand in trust and faith in the Lord. Now we in Koinonia have this in a strong manner. And we use the Word of God. This is why we're always getting you to make sure you have your Bible because you want to be writing in your Bible all the things that the Lord is saying because those prophetic words are necessary for you to hold on to for your own life, to remain firm and, f and faithful to the Lord and what he is saying. And then at the end, you'll be able to say, wow, you'll date it in your Bible and you'll say, on this date, the Lord did exactly what he said he was going to do. 
This is the power of the prophetic. Amen. And in the modern age, this is very important for us to do because this is not something that everyone does. So the Lord has called you through your baptism to exercise the prophetic office. To exercise the prophetic office. And in the exercising that prophetic office, you become a missioner. You become a missioner for the Lord. Because we're all called to mission. Because the church itself is missionary. And Koinonia especially is missionary here in Bridgeport. And so stand firm on the prophetic. And you will see that the Lord will give you this power like just like um, David, to step out and confront Goliath. And then there'll be a real celebration because you have knocked the head of the giant. Amen. Wow. We have so much to celebrate in the prophetic. And so we should really work to celebrate the power of the word of God in our lives. We should be rejoicing every time the Lord speaks. Amen. We should be rejoicing because it's the Lord himself speaking right into your life with the truth of his word that is alive and active. So David's prophetic office highlights the ongoing response required of each of us in faith. We are to respond continuously, continuously, continuously in faith. That means we are to keep celebrating and celebrating and celebrating. We are to keep rejoicing, rejoicing, rejoicing. Because there's no place for anything other than the joy of the Lord when you stand on the truth of his word. Especially in the difficult times. Especially in the moments of hardship. We have to remain firm, trusting in the prophetic word of the Lord. And that word guides us. That word, that prophetic word, guides us to the next step. And you'll be able to look back and say, well, we can celebrate. We've made it from A, now we're in B. And then we keep going, keep going, keep going. We're not the head of another giant because the Lord told us we can, and now we've reached C. And we celebrate because we've reached C. And this is how the life of the Christian should be, especially in the prophetic walk. Amen? Amen. So, like David, we have a firm confidence in the fact that God will fulfill his promises. When the Lord says something, he does it. He does it. And we have to celebrate the fact that he does the things. And not only does he do them, but he does them well. Because the Lord is good and does everything right and well for his beloved. Amen? Amen. So our faith then, if we are prophetic, and walking in this prophetic office, our faith is not focused on ourselves, nor on the circumstances around us, but on the word of God. This word is living. I wrote, it's a breathing forth, force, a breathing force that guides every action in our lives. Wow. What power, what power, when we take on our prophetic anointing. And we've all got it, every one of us. Nobody is excluded. And finally, how do we celebrate the kingly office that we have received in baptism? You received a crown. On the day of your baptism, that crown was the anointing to be king, like David. And we respond to this kingly office by service and friendship. 
As I already said, we in Koinonia have a particular anointing that comes through Father Ricardo. Because Father Ricardo has a tremendous gift for friendship. He has a capacity for friendship that I haven't seen in anyone else in my life, truly. And that anointing filters down to all the sheep in the pen. And if you're in the pen, and then you've got that gift. Amen? And this kingly office calls out of each one of us this capacity to serve and to be a friend, one for the other. It's a powerful component that makes up the life of a member of Koinonia. In fact, it's fundamental because we live the joy of the presence of Jesus indwelling in the body and Jesus is the true friend and he is also the one who serves because Jesus served us by giving himself for each one of us to set us free from the power of sin and death in our lives. His service is also what we have to mirror. To mirror service means that I don't look to myself, but I celebrate the life of my sister. I celebrate the life of my brother. I celebrate the life of the person whom the Lord has placed with me when I serve. So all of you who came here today with your, your little silver trays full of goodies, what are you doing? You are celebrating the life of every person here today. How beautiful. We are celebrating the life of one another. But Letty and Michele, the band, were serving us through the music. Michele was serving us through the prayer. Ivy was serving us through the projector. And you are serving us through the food and your presence, not just what you bring but your presence itself. Why? Because Jesus is in you. And you are bringing Jesus to the other. That is something to celebrate. Your presence, which is the presence of Jesus for me, is something that I have to celebrate. And your being here is you manifesting your kingly office as a member of the body of Christ and a member of Koinonia, John the Baptist. How beautiful. We celebrate the life of one another. How beautiful. So the celebration of this kingly office is not something static. It's moving. It's creative, as Kathy was talking about earlier on. And it desires or requires better wholehearted commitment. These three king offices, priest, prophet, and king, are not something that, uh, that you, you've received on the day of your anointing and then it, uh, on your baptism, and then it's, it's stuck in a drawer. No, no. The, this is something, it's a lived uh, movement in your life. It's an anointing that grows. And the more we come to understand what happened on the day of our baptism, the more we will be uh, reacting and building on this reality in our lives. The more it will influence our own lives and the lives of the people around us. Amen? Amen. And so, the priest, prophet, and king, these, this threefold office, becomes integrated. It becomes an integral part of your life when you start to understand what happened on the day of your baptism. 
And then when you begin to walk the journey of faith and grow in faith, you start to appreciate even more fully what it is. What is it that I have actually been called to? I have been called to celebrate the life of a Christian. I have been called to celebrate the life of Jesus in me and in my brother. I have been called to celebrate by not looking to myself, but looking to the other. And this is something I see in you in a tremendous way. This capacity to serve one another is something very strong in you and very beautiful. And so your kingly uh, activity of service affects every aspect of our lives in this walk and journey of faith. Amen? Amen. Now I wrote here, it is important to recognize that our friendships don't necessarily shield us, shield us from the trials of life, okay? But they equip us to navigate with courage, resilience, and trust in God's faithfulness. Let me read that again. It is important to recognize that our friendships don't necessarily shield us from the trials of life, but they equip us to navigate with courage, resilience, and trust in God's faithfulness. Why? Because I have my brother. I have my sister. Having you and you having me gives me this resilience in my life to be able to confront every giant, every situation that might try to pull me down. When I have my brother and I serve my brother and my brother serves me, I have this capacity for true friendship and I rise above everything that would try to pull me under. This is the joy of true koinonia. I have you and you have me. This is koinonia. And this is the vision that the Lord has for Bridgeport. That we grow in this vision of the presence of the Lord in each one of us. And we grow constantly more and more experiencing the love and the joy and the capacity to celebrate Jesus' presence with us as one. Every one of us in prayer, in praise, with prophetic word of God, in service and friendship, one for the other. And you allow me to celebrate. That propels me forward, always pushes me forward and gives me this impetus to want to do more. Your presence in my life, and I hope my presence in your life, should do the same for you. You are propelled forward through this gift of friendship. How do you think we, the consecrated community, survive? If we didn't have friendship and service for one another, forget it. It wouldn't happen because that's what holds us together. We have this strong sense of a bond that, that connects us. And it's the power of the word of God, the prophetic word, and it's the power of praise, but it's also the power of service and friendship because that makes it tangible. That's the part that makes it here, rooted in the earth. The prayer and the praise roots me with the heavens and with my brother for sure. The power of the prophetic word roots me to the heavens, but the power of friendship roots me on earth. This is the manifestation of my humanity with my brother. Amen. So we then as Koinonia have a very special call. 
and the Lord brought you here today to anoint you again and to remind you that you have this call to be priest, prophet, and king. Priest, prophet, and king. And he has anointed you to celebrate these anointings, or this anointing, because it's one, to celebrate it joyfully. I don't see any sad faces here today. No sad faces. No sad faces. Why? Because we are celebrating the joy of one another and the presence of Jesus with us in and through his word. There's nothing to be sad about. Even if there are difficulties going on in life at the minute, we celebrate. We celebrate because the Lord has anointed us from the moment of our baptism in this walk. And this walk is a school of faith. It's a school where we're learning always more and more, how do I celebrate the priestly offices that I received at my baptism? Most importantly, I celebrate you. This is the beauty of it. This is true koinonia. So to finish then, we draw on this experience of King David and we have listened to the whole life of David at different points along the way. And we have seen in David this personality who was priestly, prophetic, and kingly. And we want to adapt that into our own lives. We want to implement this anointing that we have received in our baptism and celebrate being koinonia. Celebrate being koinonia. We celebrate our priestly prayer, the priestly office through our community prayer, through our prayer at the house of prayer, through the koinonias and all the moments that the Lord gives us to be together. Remember, it's a celebration. It's a celebration. And it'll be on Wednesday night, won't it? <laughs> Celebrating the prophetic office entails engaging with the prophetic word and acting upon it with unwavering faith. Believe. We, as koinonia, believe the Lord when he says something. And it might take many years, like it was for David, for those words to be made a reality, but they will come true at their appointed time, as the Word of God says. Because everything has a time and a season. And don't be concerned for the times and the seasons with the Lord, because a thousand years is like a day. Amen? So trust them in the promises of the Lord in his word. Trust it and celebrate it. And keep reminding yourself of what you're celebrating. I got a phone call yesterday from a very good friend of mine, who, an Italian girl who's at the, the meeting in Prague in, in these days. And she said, yesterday morning in the prayer, we were all invited to repeat and proclaim the promises of the Lord for our lives. And she said, I was promising and proclaiming the promises of the Lord that I could get back to New York and back to America. And lo and behold, at the end of the prayer, she met a gentleman from Mexico who told her, because he works in that area, he'd be able to help her get back to America. How beautiful, how beautiful. So these are the sort of things that happen when we stand faithfully on the word of God, proclaiming it prophetically in our own lives. Proclaim it every day if you have to, if it's something you're waiting for, keep proclaiming it, keep proclaiming it, and the Lord for sure will do it because he's faithful to his prophetic word. And this then uh, fosters in us, makes grow in us, I suppose, by the way, 
this confidence, a confidence in the Lord that he is faithful and he will realize it. And then when it comes to celebrating your kingly office, you'll be filled with so much joy well, for what the Lord has done that you want to serve and serve and serve and you will grow in friendship with your brother and sister because you'll be saying, guess what the Lord has done for me? And what will happen? The faith in your sister, the faith in your brother will grow, will grow, will grow. And this experience of being anointed with the priestly, prophetic and um, kingly uh, offices in your life from baptism will mature always more and more and the anointing will spill out It'll spill out into the lives of those around you. Amen? Amen. So, as Koinonia, we are walking together, not alone. When you look up the dictionary, the dictionary and you see the word celebrate, it's plural, it's not singular. So we cannot celebrate on our own. We celebrate together. And so, we are together in this transformative journey of faith. You're not the same as you were a year ago, for sure. I know you're not. I know your hair is grayer, for sure, and mine too. But something has changed in this journey of faith that you had embarked upon with Koinonia. True? Isn't it? By the way, lovely hair, <laughs> You have definitely changed. <laughs> Something has changed in this journey of faith. And the anointing that you received on the day of your baptism is being activated in an altogether new way. Because you are using everything that the Lord has given you and you're implementing it into the body. You are implementing it in the community of the Koinonia. So something is changing in this walk, in this journey of faith. Something is transforming you from the inside out. And people are noticing. People are noticing. And in this journey to being changed like the butterfly, you are growing in strength. You are growing in understanding. You are growing in the power and in the truth of the word of God. You're discovering, I'm quite sure, especially through the house of prayer, there is definitely something different in my life. And you are discovering also that there is this prophetic call, this prophetic weight on your shoulders. Because the prophetic is a weight. And Koinonia has this special weight. And we celebrate it. We don't fall under the weight of it. It's not a negative weight. It's a positive thing. It's something that changes us and changes the people around us. Because we celebrate that we are a prophetic voice of one who cries in the desert, prepare the way for the Lord. Amen. We celebrate that we are John the Baptist. Amen. And it encourages us and it encourages the people around us. And more especially, it creates this unity. It creates this unity. Your transformation brings unity to the body because you are becoming more and more like Jesus and the more we become like Jesus the more opportunity he has to change the environment around us and bring this unity and bring this communion so let's celebrate amen yes celebrate amen Okay, now what we are going to do is we are going to celebrate with prayer. We are going to use our priestly office at this moment. And we are going to use also our prophetic office 
in this moment and we are going to use our kingly office in this moment of prayer.